So very soon, Windows 10 is going to go out of support. Now, if you do some jumping through hoops and you pay some money or you sign up through Bing Rewards, of all things, you can actually get an extra year of support for Windows 10. The vast majority of people aren't going to do that, of course, or maybe they'll get automated into it for some reason, you know, just kind of look out. But for the vast majority of people who are using Windows 10, they're going to do one of two things. Either they'll continue to use Windows 10 until their computer dies, in which case they'll get Windows 11 or 12 or whatever when they buy a new computer, or they're going to upgrade to Windows 11. That's the, the path that the vast majority of people are going to take. One of those two ways of doing things. For some people, they'll begin to look for alternatives, especially when they find out that they can't upgrade to Windows 11, because one of the things that Microsoft likes to do is basically planned obsolescence. Now, every company, we, we can't just hold Microsoft to a higher standard. Every company does planned obsolescence. Apple wants you to buy a new iPhone. Samsung wants you to buy a new Galaxy phone. Uh, HP wants you to buy a new crappy laptop. That's the reason why they make them so crappy. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, that's true. HP, worst laptops you could buy. But, you know, that's for another day. But anyways, the point here is, is that they want you to use your product for only so much amount of time before you are forced to go buy something new. Microsoft is an accomplice in this and that they don't make the hardware, they just make the software. And what they've done basically is arbitrarily say that there are only certain CPUs that can run Windows 11, even though Windows 11 can run on older CPUs. Now, their cutoff date is like for the last like four or five years. Now, maybe it was, you know, six years or whatever it is, but it was a fairly recent CPU is the cutoff line for Windows 11. So a lot of people who are going to take one of those two routes I mentioned earlier, which is upgrade to Windows 11, will find out that their PC, which is perfectly fine, is fairly new even, can't actually run Windows 11. So they'll have either have to pay to get support for Windows 10 for another year, go without software and security updates, or they'll have to find an alternative. Now, Microsoft obviously wants you to go out and buy a new PC because every time you buy a new PC, Microsoft gets a cut of that for their bottom line. You also will are more likely to subscribe to their Office 365 when you buy a new PC because you're, you're offered a free trial. And of course, a free trial just means that you're a subscriber probably for quite a long time because who cancels those things unless they actually don't like the stuff they just you just kind of keep those things around you know end up paying and at least a small portion of people st sticking on that subscription means more money for them microsoft also gets access to more customer data the more you upgrade to a different pc simply because you tend to register that thing maybe you haven't registered in quite a while so maybe you get a brand new uh, address or whatever, and that gets shipped off to Microsoft. They also have a tendency in newer versions of Windows to collect more and more data than they did before. Now, obviously, Windows 10 collected plenty of data. Windows 11 collects more. There's more advertisements in Windows 11 than there are in Windows 10. They want you to update things, but they also want their partners to succeed, which is, you know, jolly good of them. You know, wanting other companies to to make money is, you know, good stuff, I suppose. But the, the whole point here is that they have created their operating system in such a way where you can only use it for a certain amount of time before you have to go buy a new PC, even though your old PC is perfectly fine. So what the question is, what do you, or what should you do about this? Now, if you see the hat and you saw the channel name, you know what the answer is. It's Linux. Now, Linux is not the answer for everyone who encounters this problem. Unfortunately, there are plenty of very good reasons not to use Linux. Things like maybe you're a gamer and you, you some of the games you use have anti-cheat. A lot of that stuff isn't available on Linux. Maybe you are a creator of some kind. Maybe you're a photographer or something like that, and you use the Adobe suite, the Adobe Cloud stuff, first of all. I'm sorry that you have to do that, but, you know, some people actually like it, I suppose, and I shouldn't be so snobby about it, but... The point is, is you can't get that here. So there's a lot of legitimate reasons why going the path of switching to Linux because of Microsoft's planned obsolescence of Windows 10 isn't an option. We get that. So you're just going to have to either go one of those routes we had before where you don't get security updates or you just buy a new PC.
But for a lot of people, Linux is actually a very good option for extending the life of your laptop or your desktop PC. Once Microsoft says you're done with updates, finding yourself a distro and installing on it and putting in the effort to actually switch to Linux is a good thing. Not only does it allow you to learn something new, because Linux does require some effort to learn things, but it also will extend the life of that PC until it literally breaks or catches on fire. Hopefully it doesn't catch on fire. Linux doesn't cause it to catch on fire, but it could last an extra 10 years. It could last longer than that. A lot of people are still using laptops that were produced and manufactured in the early 2000s on Linux, and it works perfectly fine. Now, are they playing Grand Theft Auto on those things? Probably not. At least not a recent version of Grand Theft Auto anyways. But they're still using it for web browsing and email and all the, the regular stuff that most of us spend most of our time doing. Now, maybe your PC is not that old and it probably isn't, but you could be still be using your PC that long if you switch to Linux simply because Linux isn't going to ever tell you that your PC is too old. At least... They won't for a very long time. Like, we have just now started phasing out, really, 32-bit software. Now, 32-bit distros have kind of gone by the wayside, but a lot of 32-bit libra 32 libraries for actual software is still maintained on Linux simply because we can't get rid of it. So, things like Steam require 32-bit libraries because of the way that it's written, so we still have those things. And, and, and it... If, if you want a better example of us supporting hardware that's long dead on Windows, floppy drives. You can still use a floppy drive on Linux. It's perfectly well supported. Now, I'm sure you probably can do that on Windows, too, because Windows doesn't pull anything out of the kernel. But we're never going to tell you on Linux that your piece of software is not going to work anymore. And even if we, there was a situation where like a 30-year-old processor got pulled out of the kernel there's a good chance that you're still going to be able to find a distribution out there that still is going to support those old kernels for whatever period amount of time. So you, ex using Linux extends the life of your hardware. And I think that in this day and age, that's epically important because who wants to go spend a thousand, two thousand dollars on a PC when they don't have to? Like, if your computer's broken, you've dropped it, or it doesn't work anymore, it doesn't have enough storage, and you can't upgrade it, it doesn't have the graphics capability to run the programs that you want, any of those things, like, th those are legitimate reasons to go spend the money. Microsoft telling you that you can't upgrade because of some arbitrary rule is not a reasonable reason to go upgrade your hardware just because Microsoft says to. It's just not. So... Upgrading to Linux for at least some people is an option to extend the life and just give the big old bird to Microsoft and say, you no longer control me. You no longer tell me how long I can use this hardware. That is going to be determined by how long the hardware lasts. Or, or maybe it's determined by when you can find a good sale at Amazon or Best Buy on a brand new PC. Whatever it is, right? You, you know, a lot of us aren't made of money, so... You know, maybe we're just looking for the uh, a good deal and we want to wait for that. Or, or we just want to use the thing that we bought and paid good money for for as long as possible. I think that's the vast majority of people. So Microsoft does this on purpose, as we discussed. Linux is a solution for a lot of people if they're willing to put the work in. And I think that that's a, a good thing to talk about. I've talked about this in several other videos. But Linux isn't something that you're just going to hop into and just carry on because... And I should put this on a t-shirt. Actually, I think I did put it on a t-shirt at shop.linuxcast.org. But Linux is not Windows. They're not the same. Windows is not Linux. Linux is not Windows. They're not the same. So if you're coming over here, we welcome you. We will help you. But you have to understand going in, the, the biggest thing you can understand is that Linux is not Windows. It's going to work differently. You're going to have to learn some new things. And I think if you have that mindset, your hardware is going to last a long time. So... That's it for this video. If you have any thoughts or comments on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon. That link will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. There you'll find a weekly exclusive podcast that I support, that I put out for all my supporters. Basically, it's just me sitting down in front of this microphone, which I love to hit for no apparent reason, <laughs> and just rambling on about nonsense for about 15 minutes. If that's the sort of thing that you're interested in, you can go support me there or on my YouTube members down here in on YouTube land wherever that button happens to be. So thanks for all those who you, thanks to all of those of you who actually do support me on Patreon YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, 
the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. If you have switched to Linux recently, or if you're thinking about switching to Linux recently, leave me a comment in the comment section below and let me know how it's going. If you are having troubles or if you are uh, thinking of switching back to Windows, let us all know. Maybe we can help you out uh, or at least give you pointers on where you can go get help. So we are a very welcoming com community for the most part. You are going to, as usual, find some assholes, but most of us are saying, hey, welcome noobs. We were all one of you at one point and we will help you make your hardware last longer. So thank you guys for watching. I'm done rambling now, I promise. I will see you next time. Yeah.